Oh, off-white Jordan 5s, are you guys aware of that? Do you guys care? I saw this mentioned on Full Size Run the other day and I thought I'd include it on here because, you know, it's Streetwear Fridays. Supposedly, um, there's going to be another Jordan collaboration with Off-White coming up very, very soon. I'm sure you guys are already aware of and already tired of. Maybe some of you are tired, some of you are kicking yourself for not getting the uh, Jordan the Off-White 10 collection with Nike. I got the Jordan 1s. I think I've got two pairs left. I've got the Chicago Bulls color and the all-white color way of the Jordan 1, but, you know, hardly wear them because, like I mentioned before, Jordan 1s, as, as visually and aesthetically pleasing as they are, you you know, it's probably the it's Jordan ones are probably the one trainer. Maybe apart from an Air Force One, and maybe with the exception of a hmm, Air Force One, Air Jordan, or Jordan One, maybe Adidas Campus for some people, not for me. Or I, what else is a trainer? But maybe a Doctor Mart, maybe a Vans, maybe a Vans Old School. There's there's not or maybe a Converse at seventies all-star there's not many shoes that generally go well with most trousers right it's quite hard to find trainers or shoes that go with most things and i think the jordan 5 is one of the only shoes that goes with a lot of things like it's a really fucking good shoe um so even though it's a good shoe aesthetically i just think comfortable comfortability wise and um comfort levels it's just on all times low maybe it's because i spend so much time wearing so many fixed old shoes i mentioned before to do you guys that I love the Yeezy 700s. Um, I love my Balenciaga Triple S's, even though they're probably a half a size too small. I love big, chunky shoes. I've got a pair of New York boots, New Rock boots I bought recently. I'm more, I've, I, you know, I could always be seen, you know, one day out of the week wearing a pair of Dr. Martins. I love those things. But I think maybe all those years have kind of fucked up my feet. So now when I wear, uh, when I wear like, you know, trainers that are a bit thin, I kind of, I suffer a lot. And Jordan 1s are probably the, the, the way, the way, that way for me. And plus I think sizing wise, Jordan 1s, I'm a UK 10 in general. But I think when I wear you when I try and when I try and wear a UK ten and Jordan ones, they're a little bit too small because the, the toe box kind of points to the front. Then when I size up half a size, they get too long, so I have to basically wear a size ten and then take out the insole. But then when you take out the insole of a Jordan one, if you've ever seen a Jordan one, it's not really an insole; it's like a foam bit. And then by that time, your feet are basically to the ground, and you can feel every pebble, every sort of even you know when you walk past the zebra crossing, and he's got a little bumps on the on the floor, and those are basically meant for blind people, right? So they can. Um, navigate their way around sometimes you feel those coming through your feet so like, ugh. but you know what can you do but that being said um jordan fives are, are, are a very popular shoe um i think in i don't know what era that was was that maybe just after was that what would you say was that 2011 that was a big boom of jordan fives everyone was wearing them i know my friend marcus was fucking you know you could he was always pictured in a pair of jordan ones the office london had a pair always wearing them with skinny jeans so they're a very popular shoe with people um i'm necessarily not a fan of them i think they don't really drop well with my feet the, that that big fat 3m tongue on the front doesn't look that great and i think in general they look the best with shorts on but people like to wear them in jeans so it's not really a good idea tucking your shoes behind them i don't know but supposedly there's a rumor they're going to come out this is from sneaker news off-white and jordan 5 releasing in 2020 which is interesting because i'm not i'm interested to see how they're going to launch them are they going to launch them as part of another because i remember he had a as part of Virgil's gallery exhibition in chicago that moment a retrospective thing that he did um is it a moment i don't know where it was whatever gallery that it was I remember there being a, a section of the gallery that basically showcased loads of um, of the ideas the, of the kind of, you know, the cutting room floor that end up on the cutting room floor, things that weren't approved or things that didn't get, you know, go to towards the end. I think in, in the end, if you look at the shoes that were denied or that were not, didn't go through to the end, I think we're, ha I think I'm happy with the, with what we got in the tens and what was missing out. I don't think there was any, there was any misses, misses really. Even the Jordan 4, which is my favorite Jordan of all time. I don't think that colorway was that great. It was sort of like a bread colorway with like a translucent, um, sort of like front bit at the like the front paneling was a bit translucent. I think with a red bit at the back. If you can find it, actually, put a picture up. Um, let me see here. Jordan's exhibition is here. I remember there was a, there was a whole table full of, of trainers that, that didn't make it. Yeah, here, here they are. I found it already. So, actually, you know what? I take it back. The Jordan Four that was kind of off white was really nice. I've got it here actually. So the bread sort of colorway, the flip of the bread colorway, I wasn't really a fan of. I didn't think that looked too great, um, in my opinion. And, and, and this is my favorite shoe of maybe of all time. This along with the infrared Air Max One, I mean, so the infrared Air Max Ninety, maybe the Air Force One, um, high, all white with a the strap. These are probably my three favorite models of all time from Nike. But I don't think that that Jordan Four colorway in the in the off white kind of worked. You know, it's sort of like translucent wings, translucent netting. 
and they're sort of like faded at the front. Kind of remind me a little bit of the, you know, it reminds me of actually colorway wise. It reminds me a lot of the Balenciaga Triple S that I have. It looks basically the same, doesn't it? Right? Or maybe the Triple S looks like that. It's sort of like faded a bit at the front. I don't know. Maybe. Um, then you've got this. I think this Jordan was really nice. A kind of off white cream sample. They they look really beautiful. They remind me again of an old Air Force One colorway. Um, I think it was like a JP version. It was sort of like an essentially completely cream and sale, all white sole, gum sole, and then a kind of a yellow swoosh, I think. So they look quite cool. But there wasn't that many things. There's a Jordan 1 here with like a yellow turbo that people might have liked. But I don't think there's many left on the cutting room floor that were people are really crying out for. So I think in the end, we got quite a good calibration out of them. But I'm interested to see what they do with this Jordan 5. How are they going to release them? This, but let's just read this. This is from Sneaker News. It says the following. It says, rumored to release in 2020. It says, since opening the doors of his exhibition at the MCA, okay, um, the modern, what's that? Modern Contemporary Art, Modern Chicago Contemporary, I don't know what that stands for. Um, shedding light on the many works that he's had with the entirety of the Beaverton branch thus far. Virgil Abloh has led many, spe many to speculate on a following Jordan brand collaboration, hopefully continuing the elements of the Nike 10 one. Through yet not confirmed rumors of an off-white Jordan, Jordan Air 5 are slowly making their way to the surface, surely followed by a many imaginative mock-ups. Uh, blah, blah. so yeah so this is no one really knows but there's a rumor out there that's going to come out again i'm not too sure about these um not my favorite model again for the resellers it's probably going to be a no-brainer to buy um there's still loads of the jordans i don't think you can find any of the nike 10 collaboration under maybe 400 dollars or under 500 dollars. so if you want to make a quick buck then maybe get on that asap but for a sneakerhead or for somebody that's into trainers like myself meh i can pass on that again i'm not that bothered about jordans anymore i think nowadays i'm trying to expand if I am going to buy sneakers, I want to make sure that I kind of go back to and harken back to the old days of being a sneakhead where you actually found trainers that no one actually liked and you started rocking them and then that made them popular. You've seen them a lot now with ASAP Rocky and those kind of flame converses that are on sale everywhere for a while. Now he's wearing them and now you can't find one pair anywhere, right? That's essentially what sneakerhead is being about, like picking something that you like, wearing the fuck out of it and then making other people think, oh shit, they're quite cool, right? Ian Connor did that for a bit with sketches. Like, dude, that's what sneakers head was about, like finding some weird Deodoro, some weird Essex and making that pop. But a Jordan 5 nowadays, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit meh. It reminds me of like a Jordan 6 or 7, you know, with skinny jeans and leather jacket. I'm not really on that vibe right now at the moment. But again, if you're a reseller or if you're just a, a, a fan of sneakers in general, Virgil, there may be something that you want to buy. But, you know, again, for me, it might be just be a reselling thing. Not Nothing more, nothing less. 